Hey everyone. Uh, so in today's video lesson, we are going to go over how to export textures from Substance Painter to Blender using um, Substance Painter, using an output template. Uh, then we are going to set those up, set the textures up and assign them to your model so that they look just like they do in Substance Painter. We are going to be using the Node Wrangler add-on, uh, which makes things super easy. Um, but we'll also go over naming conventions. Um, yeah, and so that should be really good. And stay tuned at the end of this video for a little bonus lesson um, that will make your life a little bit easier when setting up textures uh, for multiple objects. So let's get started. Um, First thing that you will want to do in order to properly set up your PBR textures um, within Blender is to enable the Node Wrangler add-on. This comes shipped with Blender. It is really, really great, and it will make your life a lot easier. So go over to Edit, Preferences, go to the add-ons. And as you can see, I already have no Wrangler set up, but to search for it, make sure that you don't have enabled add-ons only, and then just type in node, and then you should see node Wrangler, and then go ahead and enable it. Now, one really critical uh, step, which will make your life very easy, once you set up node Wrangler, once you enable it, Go ahead and uh, use the drop down menu and look at this section right here. And these are the tags for auto texture detection in the principled BSDF setup. What this is saying is when you import textures into Blender with a certain naming convention, it will automatically point and set up the correct shader network. So this is really important to make it very easy, a two-step process. So if you look at base color, subsurface color, and the metallic, specular, roughness, gloss, normal, bump, and displacement, these all have tags that you can use within Substance Painter to automatically export textures with these tags. So we're gonna go over that and how to set those up. So with uh, what we're doing in Substance Painter, we're gonna need to pay attention to the color, to the metallic or metalness, to the roughness, and then to the normal map. And then with uh, displacement, that would be your height, which in this case, we're not gonna use a height map, but we will still export it out of uh, Substance Painter. Okay, so now that we've enabled the Node Wrangler, you can see that uh, what I've done to just um, get the layout to get the layout of my textures. So um, what I have is one shader is gonna be for the base. And you can see that I have, um, so if we click on the base, you can see all these blue. So like everything with this blue uh, shader, that's gonna be the base. And that lines up perfectly with how I set up in uh, Substance Painter. So I just have a blue BSDF with uh, the Game Boy Advance body. That's what that that's what I've modeled here. And then I have the top, which is the Game Boy Advance top. I have the screen glass. And then I also have uh, one more, which is the play screen. That's what you actually see the game playing on. So there's four uh, sets, four texture sets that we have here. And this will perfectly line up when we go into Substance Painter. So in Substance Painter, we have the model and we also have four texture sets. We have the Game Boy, uh, so let's, let's look at these separately. We have the Game Boy Advance body. This is exactly how it is within Blender, the top. And you can see that you can kind of see through it to see some mirrored action there. Uh, the main play screen, which is uh, this right here. And then the screen glass. So that's all mirrored, that's fantastic. 
to export the textures, you can go to File, Export Textures, and that brings up the Export Textures dialog. So let's take a quick look at this. The settings, the global settings, uh, this is where we are going to want to export the textures to. Uh, this is the size. This is a 4K texture. Uh, for now, that's fine. We're going to do PNG, 8-bit. And then currently, the output template is set to one that I've already made for Blender. But we'll go ahead and look at what that looks like to make one. Um, and then we have which texture sets um, are going to be exported. Um, but to start from scratch, let's go to the output templates to set up our own Blender export template, which will make your life really easy. So the easiest way to do this is to start with one that's already done and it has most everything set up, and that's going to be the PBR Metallic Roughness. So we're going to go here and we're going to take a quick look at it first. So here is the... Um, how the textures are going to be exported in terms of what the naming convention is going to be. So this is important because this is going to dictate um, the naming convention and we already discussed that we need to have it specific for Node Wrangler in order for it to make our lives easier with an automatic um, with the automatic connection of textures. So we're going to need to change this right here for every single one. But for now, let's right click and duplicate it. And you can see that it came down here, so let's rename it. And we're gonna go to PBR Metallic Roughness and just to make it different from, uh, from the other one I made, I'm gonna do Blender. Okay, so now that we have that, um, right off the bat, let's change the normal type. So. Blender uses an open GL normal map and not a direct X normal map. So it's a very easy change. You go over to the normal setting and you can hover over this and you can see that it does say normal direct X. Um, but in the converted maps, all you have to do in order to change this to an open GL is to go to normal open GL and drag it over and then just say RGB channels. Okay. And now if you, hover over it, if you hover over it, it now indicates that it's a normal OpenGL normal map. So, fantastic. So, now the thing to do is to open Blender back up. Let's go to the add-ons again, the preferences, and look at these tags. So as you can see, the base color, the tag can be diffuse, diff, albedo, base, coal, or color. So let's go with these last ones to make it easy. So, so the base color is going to need to be color. So we'll go back to substance, base color. Instead of base color, we're going to just do it as color. And then we're going to go back to substance, uh, back to blender, excuse me. And then we're going to metallic, and it's going to be, let's just do metal to make it really easy. So there's roughness, there's metallic, let's do metal. Roughness. Keep on doing that, roughness. We'll do rough, and then normal, we'll do norm and displacement will do height. So rough, norm, and height. So here's the normal map, do norm. There's that roughness, we'll do rough. Color, rough, metal, norm, height. And then for now, uh, we can um, we can set this. Actually, let's just set this up. So we'll go to here again, and we'll say emissive. See, it, it does not have an emissive map, so this won't get set up automatically if you have an emissive. But that is really not an issue. You can still set up. You can still set that up after the fact. 
So for now, to keep things simple, we're going to delete this. So now you have an output template for Blender that will work really easily. So the PBR Metallic Roughness Blender, that's the output template. So what we're going to do now in order to use it, we are going to go to settings and we're going to change this output template to the one that we just made, which is at the very bottom here. And then we're going to double check our settings. That's where we want it to go to. It's the output template that we uh, just made with everything else is correct. Th these are going to be 4K textures. So now we can go just to export the textures and that will export all the textures to the uh, place that, that we wanted to. Okay, so back in Blender, let's, uh, we are in the shading tab. Now what we're going to do, we are going to utilize um, the node wrangler to set up our uh, nodes. So the first thing you want to do is make sure that you are an object and not world or line style, but go to object and then select the textures that you, or the, um, the object, which will bring up your uh, principal shader that you set up with everything that needs that texture set. So with Node Wrangler to do a to to automatically set up the shading network, and I'm just gonna make this a little bit bigger. Uh, the the shortcut to do that is Control Shift T. So I found that out, or you can see where the hotkeys are for those. Um, for those within uh, this long list here. So we can see that Control Shift T is somewhere in here where you can uh, utilize the quickness of um, the automatic setup. So we have our material selected. Control Shift T. It will bring up the um, the texture uh, dialog box automatically. And as you can see, this is the body. This is the body. So I'm going to need the color, the metal, the normal, and the rough of the body. And then you go to Principal Texture Setup, and then it will automatically set up your your texture network. You can see that the base color, the metallic, the roughness, the normal map, it's all set up correctly. So then if we go here, you can see that that all looks exactly like it did within Substance Painter. Let's just go back to Substance Painter. See, it looks just like it. So now let's quickly just set up the other textures just to do it a few more times for practice. So that's set up correctly. We're going to go to the top, do the texture here, Control Shift T. This was the top shader, so color, metal, norm, rough. Perfect. All right, that looks like it worked out really good. Here's the screen glass, and it's it definitely makes it easy when you name things the exact same. So screen glass, screen glass, Control Shift T. Color, metal norm. So in this case, we also have we, we also have the opacity map, which we have to set up um, separately. But for now, we'll hide that. And then we lastly have the 
the main screen, the main play screen. So Control Shift T, main play screen, color, middle, norm, rough. Fantastic. All right. So there you have it. That is the really easy way to set up your textures with from Substance Painter to Blender uh, with the Node Wrangler making it really, really easy. All right, bonus material, bonus tip. So within this project, what I ended up doing was making multiple textures, multiple versions, multiple versions of this texture. And so it's really easy to, um, to duplicate a texture. Uh, so let's, let's actually go back to the modeling tab. We want to duplicate the collection. I'll just go right click and duplicate collection. I'll hide the one. Now we have another. This, this one I want to be a different uh, color. So now, but currently it has the same texture as the previous one. So I did create a Pokemon version. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna rename this to make it easy. Yellow. We're gonna go back to shading, and we are going to um, go to a different shader that I've already, um, I have already exported. Um, but it has the same setup. So just to show you guys how that works, what you can do is go to the texture that you want to duplicate and then hit the new material, add new material button. And then that duplicates the material and then it does an automatic rename. So we're going to call this yellow and now we're going to go ahead and link up the new textures here. So we're going to go to the other one I have here, which in this case, um, most of the other textures didn't change. So I just have a couple. So we're going to do the, oh, that's for the cartridge. We're going to do yellow. So we have the body yellow color. That's correct. As you can see, things are already changing. We have the met, uh, the metallic. So we'll need to go to there every time. Body, yellow, metal. The roughness. Go off one. Body, yellow, rough. And then the normal map. Body, yellow, norm. So this didn't quite get everything, but that's okay because this will make it really easy. So I need to then, I need to assign the yellow um, texture set to all of these bits right here. So we can select the D pad and then go to GBA body, and you can see that we can just do GBA body yellow. So really quick and easy. And also drag it from here. Okay, so I have just a few areas where I need to assign this texture. And there we go. So now if I were to switch back from the yellow to the purple, you can see that it kept the purple texture. And then, oh, I, I did miss one, so. Yeah, it's also going to be yellow. 
Here we go. So that's one way to get different texture variations within your models. Um, in this case, I made multiple versions of the textures for practice and, and to um, just have some variation for the animation. But that way you can quickly um, duplicate the model, duplicate the texture without having to relink everything, um, without having to make a new texture and then relink. You can just copy the texture and then open up the, the, uh, the uh, new shaders. So that makes it very easy. All right, thanks for watching this bonus tip. You guys have a great day and we'll see and we will see you next time.